Hello everyone and welcome to The Order. Today we're going to define the common mistakes made when building a budget gaming PC. This is the second part of my video, so if you haven't seen the first one, go and check it out. To understand the concept of building a good budget rig, I will divide this video into three categories. Overall system balance, individual part selection and acceptable compromises. Let's start off with the overall balance of the system. A common mistake when building a budget gaming rig is the total imbalance of the components in the machine in order to squeeze out the most performance for the price. To illustrate this I have configured two imbalanced PCs for about $450. As we can see this is a perfect example of a badly configured system. Like I said before the GPU is the biggest frame determining factor in a gaming rig but underpowering it with the rest of the components won't get you far. In this example, we have a powerful dedicated graphics card combined with a CPU which lacks the power required to adequately utilize that GPU and the no-name power supply which can spell disaster. You have to balance the system so that none of the components bottleneck each other. This is the second example. This system is a bit more balanced but still not configured properly if your purpose is gaming. When dealing with a tight budget, we have to find the perfect ratio between CPU and GPU power. In this machine, the processing power is a bit overkill and the video card is way underkill, making this kind of an impractical system for gaming. The key to a good overall system is to achieve a good balance between all of the components and not to overpower one component at the expense of the others. Now let's move on to the individual part selection. In this section I will point out the errors people make when choosing each of their individual components. Starting off with the motherboard, when choosing the motherboard for your build I do not recommend going for the absolute minimalistic board you can find. In order to save money, people choose the bare minimum that would sustain their system and sometimes regret it in the future. By regret I mean that in the future they realize that they need some of the features that they overlooked or more connectivity from their board. In some cases people even try to do some overclocking with these boards and end up with a fried system. Overclocking a CPU that is bare barely supported by your system is not a smart thing to do. My recommendation is that you spend the extra 20 or 30 dollars for a better board because this part is the foundation of your entire system so do not go cheap. The CPU and GPU. As I said before, to configure a good system you must achieve a good ratio between CPU power and GPU performance. A general mistake people make is when they combine a powerful GPU with an underpowered CPU resulting in system bottleneck just like in the first example rig. This makes the expensive GPU pointless and will result in poor game performance. A common mistake I've seen people make is with the combination between RAM quantity, speed and RAM. Some people configure their builds with only 4 gigs of RAM which in my opinion is cutting it a bit close considering how RAM hungrier games these days. I personally think that 8 gigs of DR3 1600 MHz memory is the sweet spot in these budget builds. Next up is the speed. Try to get at least 1600 MHz DDR3 memory but don't overdo it unless you are using an APU or an IG based system. You don't need insanely fast RAM so put the saved money in the GPU. Finally RAM manufacturer. I recommend that you avoid putting no name RAM in your system. Manufacturers like Corsair, Kingston, Crucial, ADATA and others offer good quality RAM for reasonable prices and furthermore they offer long or even lifetime warranty on their products. Unfortunately, we can't fit a SSD in such a small budget, so we will have to stick with a mechanical hard drive. Personally, I think that a 1TB drive offers a good price to storage ratio. I'll give you an example. Let's check out the Western Digital Caviar Blue series hard drives, particularly the 500GB and the 1TB models. The difference between them is $4 which is ridiculous considering that you're getting double the storage for a small fraction of the price. As far as manufacturers go, I would go with the Western Digital drives because I find them to be good, reliable and reasonably priced. Next up is the power supply. Do not go with cheap power supplies. To ensure that you have a good running stable system, always spend the extra cash and get a quality power supply. Cheap power supplies could cost you greatly because they have a relatively high failure rate, the components in them are of the lowest class and they sometimes even skip soldering some of the components on the board to save money. As far as manufacturer goes, for a budget build I would recommend the Corsair CX series, the Color Master B and Extreme series or the lower wattage EVGA models. 
The case contributes to cooling, connectivity and aesthetics of the system, but it doesn't contribute anything in terms of performance, which means that if you put the components in the cheapest case possible or in a Corsair 900D, the performance will be the same. My recommendation is that you don't overspend on the case, so you have more resources for the rest of the components. So, we have reached the final section of this tutorial, the acceptable compromises. Now I know some of you will completely ignore the previous two steps and make the mistakes I've pointed out. In this part, I will show you in what order to scale down your components in order to reduce the overall price of the rig or put the saved money in some specific component. First up on the chopping block is the case. Getting a cheaper case will not affect the performance of the PC. The case contributes only to cooling and connectivity, so if you're on a tight budget, go for the most basic case you can find. Second up is the hard drive. You can cut the capacity of your hard drive in order to save some money, but considering that the price difference between a 500GB and a 1TB drive is $4, I don't recommend doing this unless the price difference is greater. Third up is the RAM. There are three ways you can scale down the RAM of your system, by speed, by quantity and by brand. Like I mentioned before, 8GB of DDR3, 1600MHz memory is the sweet spot for these builds, but you can save a couple of bucks if you get 8GB of DDR3, 1333 memory. The second solution is sacrificing quantity and getting a 4GB kit for your system. This is an acceptable compromise, but considering the RAM requirements of current and future games, you could be looking at a RAM upgrade in the close future. And finally, you could save a few dollars if you go for no-name RAM. Fourth on the list is the power supply. There is only one acceptable sacrifice you can make when it comes to power supplies – wattage. You could use an online PSU calculator to determine how much power your system requires. I personally use these two – the Extreme Power Supply Calculator and the Cooler Master PSU Calculator. In the future, I will make a detailed tutorial on how to calculate your wattage properly – links to them in the description. When calculating, I recommend that you add at least 30 watts to the end result just to be on the safe side. Now, sacrificing from wattage doesn't mean you should sacrifice from quality. The rules for a quality PSU still apply. Do not go for the cheapest or no-name options. You may ask, why did I place the PSU after the RAM and the hard drive? Well, the PSU is the power source of your entire system and investing in it is always a smart thing to do. I put it in this position because if you plan a future hardware upgrade, it's always wise to have reserve power left on your power supply. Fifth, the motherboard. You could make some sacrifices in terms of motherboard features, getting a cheaper board with less force and features will not impact performance that much. Now in the long run you might need some of those features, so you might have to seek expansion options. Now the motherboard and the PSU have a more specific position in your system. They are the foundation for the entire build. Some of their features are not upgradable unless you change the components themselves. For an example, you cannot buy a wattage upgrade for your PSU. If you require more power for your system, your only solution is to change the entire PSU. The same applies to the motherboard, you cannot install extra RAM DIMM slots. Yes, you can install PCI or PCI Express expansion cards to get SATA 3 or USB 3.0, but considering that you could get these features in advance for a small price increase makes the investment worth it. So that is why I've placed these components in this position. Sixth up is the CPU. You could scale your CPU down from an i5 or a FX to an i3 or an Athlon. The minimum I would recommend is the Athlon X4 750K. Budget dual cores are always an option, but your system will be experiencing significant bottlenecking. And finally, the GPU. Now, if you are forced to make a big compromise from the GPU, I would recommend that you save up more resources for your build. The minimum for a GPU I would recommend is the AMD R7-260X or the NVIDIA GTX 750. So this concludes my in-depth revision of the common mistakes made when building a budget gaming rig. Keep in mind that in time the specific part examples I've given will become obsolete, but the general principles will remain the same. The same applies to the order of the component scale down. I hope this tutorial helps you to configure a better gaming rig. Send in questions, like, comment and subscribe for more tech videos. The Order, signing out.